it's now possible to visit an art gallery using the magic of virtual reality. This is the brainchild of Swiss startup VR All Art. But believe it or not, VR isn't the only exciting thing about the company. They've developed a new marketplace for artists, galleries and art buyers to exhibit and buy artworks in the virtual world. VR All Art has created the All Art Coin cryptocurrency. That means each and every transaction using this alternative currency is processed via blockchain. A system that is able to both secure and verify records. Blockchains store information across a series of databases, so records are decentralized and can't be changed or tampered with. The whole uh, thing is powered by blockchain technology, so that means that all the transactions are happening actually on the blockchain. Uh, so we can have the traceability of art pieces on the blockchain. We also have a ability to rent and um, uh, sell the art pieces, but also pay the exhibition fees, uh, take curation rewards. Everything is actually, we're creating an economy of art space on, on the blockchain and inside virtual reality. But why are people hailing this as the future of the art world? Because it solves a number of problems. Verification confirmed. Blockchain image databases can legitimize the origins of various works. Authenticity sorted. The system can be used to verify that an artwork is authentic. Access, no problem. Blockchain opens the door to fine art through online markets. And democratization, while being able to buy shares in artworks, is now more affordable. And we will start the bidding here at 28 million pounds. It means owning art like this, this or this may no longer be out of the question. It is definitely popular and there, there's a degree of a fad going on, particularly around some of the crypto tokens. But the technology underlying blockchain and, and crypto tokens is incredibly powerful and has the ability to change economic infrastructure, even the way that we govern and organise ourselves as societies. And that popularity was demonstrated at Art Basel in June. The art show held a conference on the future of art and blockchains. It's the most important fair bar none. It's the gold standard of how the art world is. And you know, if Art Basel's getting involved, you know the art world's taking it seriously. But what are the risks? Some of the big issues for us are around trust, which is paradoxical because blockchain is about building trustless communities or, or not having a need to have somebody there who looks after us all. And yet there are a lot of issues around trusting the technology, trusting in different actors to build a network that everybody can operate on fairly, and also trusting in some of the use cases. Blockchains are all about asset control, but a piece of art isn't just an asset and purchasing a piece isn't simply a commercial transaction. Why? because it's about falling in love with a piece of art. I think art is much more valuable as a held asset than it is as an actively traded asset. Blockchains may be invaluable when it comes to art provenance, valuations and record keeping. But is there a danger that blockchains could shift the focus too heavily towards finance, making art nothing more than a commodity? That's one thing the art world's going to have to navigate if it wants to get the best out of new technologies. So just what impact will blockchain have on the art market and will consumers trust the system enough to use it? To answer those questions and more, I'm joined by Jason Bailey. He's a self-described art nerd that builds analytical databases of artists on his blog, Art Gnome, thank you so much for being with us today, Jason. Now, you say your mission is to use technology and data to improve the world's art uh, historical record and to pr improve opportunities uh, for artists. Uh, does that mean you're happy with blockchain playing an active role in the art market? Yeah, thank you for having me on. So uh, two things that are really important to me as both an artist and a technologist. Uh, one of them is our art historical record. So um, people that, that are interested in art uh, may or may not know that it's really hard today. There's no single database listing out all the known works from our most important artists. 
So things like if you, if you go to Google and look up how many paintings did Jackson Pollock make or Mark Rothko make, you know, you, you don't get consistent answers there. And as a result of not having a good database to back this, we have a real problem with forgery. So that's where something like a blockchain-based uh, database can really help. Mm -hmm. um, so as a technology, I think it's, it's a, a great opportunity for us to improve uh, our historical record. And then on the, the artist's side, um, in terms of making opportunities for artists, um, there's a whole new market that's emerging that's really exciting around digital art. So the same technology in blockchain that allows you to treat Bitcoin as currency, mm -hmm. that because of mm -hmm. digital, it's a concept called digital scarcity. We're allowed to use that concept to treat digital art, which there was previously no market for because people didn't know how to buy something that was digital. You can now treat digital art as if it was physical art. So you just listed some advantages uh, of blockchain. What are some of the downfalls of it, though? Yeah, so it's a lot of people say it's like the, the early days of the Internet, where if you remember, um, you, if you're old enough to remember, not all of us are, um, when we had dial-up modems and you'd have to wait and everything was slow and it would take forever for an image to load. Mm -hmm. But then obviously the Internet has evolved because we've spent so much time and passion around improving it. Well, we're in the early days of blockchain technology where um, if people wanted to, say, collect digital art or uh, adjust something um, on the, the, the digital ledger for, for the um, provenance side, you, there's a lot of um, overhead right now where you need to sign up for special plugins and go to your bank and connect it and get some cryptocurrency. And it's a little bit intimidating for, um, for people at the moment. So, Jason, how exactly does blockchain make art more affordable for people out there? A more exciting and somewhat controversial thing that's going on right now is fractional ownership. Mm -hmm. So companies like Mycenas are making it so a single work can be tokenized and owned by 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 owners. Another company called Ten Swiss is doing a similar thing where maybe geographically five or six people own uh, almost like stocks in a company. You would own shares in the artwork, and that's made possible through, uh, through blockchain. So the way that democratizes um, collecting is uh, if you're able to drop the cost of investing into a very expensive piece of work, more people who maybe don't have as much money can, can invest, right, mm -hmm. is one way. And then another way is this cutting out the middleman and direct peer-to-peer -peer payments so that you can reduce the costs uh, associated with owning art when the payment goes 100% to the artist. Well, I'm really curious to see where the art market is headed to in five to 10 years or so. Jason, thank you so much for being with us today on Showcase. Thank you for having me.